What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. That's right. Today, we're going to be talking about flashbacks, something that happens to me on a regular basis when I go to certain places. It gives me flashbacks. It reminds me of the penitentiary. And, you know, the more that I think about this subject, you know, it resembles post-traumatic stress. That's right. People can have that going to the penitentiary, especially if you went to a very hard prison. It will change your outlook on life forever. Certain sounds, certain things will just make you, you know, relive going back to the penitentiary. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Some of these places that I'm going to be talking about, almost everyone's been to, okay? One in particular, I know, you know, almost everybody's been to this place. And it definitely makes me think of the penitentiary. It's actually a little worse than prison to me, man, for real. I know, you know, I had a pretty easy ride in the penitentiary. I didn't have too many problems. Uh, and there are people that had just a horrible ride, you know, they stuffed it, it was like hell on earth for them. But for me, one of these places I'm going to be talking about was worse than prison. It, it is worse than prison and I hate it, absolutely hate it. But yeah, there are some things that, you know, just really make me think about prison and also, you know, m more along the lines of this post-traumatic stress, for real, I have nightmares. I have nightmares of prison, I have nightmares of me catching fresh charges and going back to prison for life, you know, murder charges and stuff like that, or I'll have dreams of being in prison and committing another crime before I, w I have these ones all the time, you know, I'll be in prison and I'll commit another crime in prison and catch a charge and I won't go home. I was about to go home. I have those all the time. I was about to go home from prison in my dream and then I did something and I caught more time. You know, I could have dreams about the Predator, Freddy Cougar. That stuff don't faze me. But when I have a dream, a true nightmare of a dream is me looking at a life sentence in prison. For real. That is what I consider a nightmare, my friends. But yeah, there are certain things that just really remind me of prison. Whistles. Every time I hear a whistle, man, it all I think about is count. You know, every time that they came in to count the inmates, uh, you know, that's what they do to make sure no one escapes. They blew a whistle. That was the first thing these correctional officers do when they come in to the pod or the cell block, whatever the case is. They blow a whistle, say, stand for count, you know, all this, that, and the third. And I live right by a high school, man, and I hear these whistles going off all the time. Man, speaking of that, I heard on the intercom, like, I'm right next to a high school, okay, so I hear a lot of things. Coming from that school, I hear drums playing for the sports at the stadium or whatever. And the other day, I was outside in the morning time. It was like 10.30 in the morning. And I heard over there, intercom says, lockdown procedures and practices will be held at this time. They are practicing lockdown. So I started thinking to myself, got lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. You know, I started freaking out a little bit. Lockdown, lockdown. Because they kept saying lockdown over the intercom. You know what I mean? And I was all about to record it for y'all, but I was like, nah, I ain't going to do it. But uh, the whistles... You know, hearing that lockdown thing on the intercom, it kind of, you know, hit me with a little bit of flashbacks. It's nothing too major. You know, I don't sit there and dwell on it like a lot of people with some serious post-traumatic stress do. I kind of just think about it for a good, you know, 30, 40 seconds and then I'm, I'm back to my normal civilian life. But there are a lot of things that make me think of prison. Like I recorded something the other day and I haven't showed you the footage of it yet because it was a haunted house type thing. I went to this amusement park and... Did a lot of GoPro footage, and I'm going to start dropping that stuff on the first day of October, okay? I'm going to start doing this thing on October starts, you know, pertaining strictly to Halloween, for real. I'm going to have all kinds of crazy clips. I might have crazy stories, but I went to this amusement park thing, and, you know, we went to go eat, and the way that they fed people, you had to get in these lines, kind of like, uh, you know, high school lines, you get or prison lines. They got the metal rail, and you got to walk along it. And so you get to where you pick up your tray. And I recorded, I said, damn it, they got trays just like penitentiary, you know what I mean? And I started messing with my old lady. I was like, hey, that's my tray. Get off my tray, you know? And uh, <laughs> But yeah, this place really reminded me of prison, the way that they fed individuals with the trays and the line. And, you know, it was crazy. But yeah, man, any place that serves, you know, trays, trays really make me think of prison, you know? I remember this other time, I went to Niagara Falls. Check it out, I went to Niagara Falls. And in order for you to go down close to the falls, the rocks are slippery and wet sometimes. So they made everyone take off their shoes and socks. And they gave you these Niagara Falls slippers. I said, well, I'll be damned. This is just like the penitentiary. You know, I felt like I was just at home. I was at, I'm at home here. Let me, 
I got me some fresh slippers and all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? So uh, it was it was crazy just to be sitting there next to a bunch of other people putting on slippers, or it was it was like these strap on you know crazy grip type slippers going to the airport okay going to airport is a lot like prison when you're getting searched and all that crazy stuff anything that pertains to walking through a metal detector or people going through your luggage or whatever whatever case it is it reminds me of prison going to water parks going to amusement park any kind of amusement parks where they stop you and check your bags hey it reminds me of the penitentiary now this place is somewhere everyone has been and i can honestly say that it's worse than prison to me. I hate this place. I hate going, but sometimes I have to, okay? And that is hospitals. I don't think people really understand how similar a hospital is to a penitentiary, okay? You are you get your own little private room, cell, because for real, if you are going through something serious, you ain't leaving that room. They're going to hook you up to an IV and they ain't going to let you leave until they say so, all right? Of course, you can force yourself and try to escape. <laughs> Escape in the hospital, just like escape in jail, you know what I mean? There's all kinds of things that resemble prison in a hospital. Check it out. Uh, you know, the last time where I really realized that this place was like prison was when my last child was born, okay? My wife was sitting in a uh, uh, little, you know, the room, the hospital room for, it was about a week, about a week that we were chilling in there because, you know, we, we were on the verge of having a baby, but we didn't know exactly when. So she was just sitting there, her water already broke, and we are just sitting there for days waiting for her to have the baby and all that. And then after the baby's born, you gotta kinda stay there for a few days. If it's a little underweight or something, you know, they like to keep you there for observation of the baby. But anyway, so I'm sitting in this freaking room with her, man, and I'm, I'm doing things that I never even recognized until afterwards, okay? I'm pacing. I'm sitting in this cell, I mean, uh, <laughs> hospital room, I'm sitting in the hospital room doing stuff that I did in a jail or prison cell. I would pace. I was pacing back and forth, and then slowly but surely, I said, man, where's these trays at? I said it to her, and then that's when it snapped to me. I was like, man, I'm, I feel like I'm in the penitentiary again. Because, you know, in, in, uh, I keep wanting to call the hospital jail, but in the hospital, they bring you your trays. And I ain't going to lie, the hospital food, a lot of people don't like it, but I liked it. Just like when I went to Scared Straight. And they brought out the worst tray they could think of. It was like just beans and rice. These kids didn't touch it. I crushed it. You know what I mean? I crushed it. I don't get, you know, give me some salt and I'm good. But these trays that came through the hospital, some of them were delicious. I ain't gonna lie, man. A lot of people are like, hospital food is horrible. Look, anytime people bring food to me in my room, like, oh, <laughs> that reminds me, go to a hotel and get room service. I love that. I love it, man. So bring me my tray. Just like when you're in the hole, you don't have to go to line or anything. Just bring me my tray, bro. That's one of the benefits of going to the hole is you don't have to do nothing but get up out your bed and reach, you know, three feet away from you to get your trays. But in the hospital, they do bring you your meals. And that is something that, you know, really makes me think of jail and prison. And not only that, check it out. You know, uh, of course, if you're not a patient, you don't have to really worry about, uh, not leaving the hospital room, okay? So sometimes, you know, when I was bored, I would just walk the hospital. And there's some things that you don't do, okay? You just don't do it just like in prison and jail. And I, I had this problem when I first went to prison. I used to walk past everyone's cell and, you know, slowly look in it. Just like with the hospital. For some reason, man, I don't know why. I'm just, my mind is like, I got to see what's in the room. And, you know, a lot of these hospital rooms, well, just like jail cells, they're kind of cracked or the door's all the way open, you know what I mean? And I had a problem. I always, I would always look in the uh, next patient's room as I'm walking down the hallway. And sometimes, you know, I wish I didn't look in there. Some of these people, man, they look like they're on their deathbed, you know what I mean? And they'll look at you and you'll look at them, straight eye contact for a split second. And you just get that feeling of like, damn, you know, maybe I shouldn't even be looking in these doors. It's crazy, man. It's crazy the way... Uh, if you've been to the penitentiary or jail, you will think like this. This is type of stuff that you, if you've been there for a long time, okay, you will think about stuff like this. In the hospital, they bring you flowers, cards, man, you know, it's great. You, you're in a hospital bed, you get some flowers and cards. It's just like being in jail. You get a card. You're like, yes, you know, I got some kind of interaction in here to the outside life. In the hospital, you get a little tiny TV, you know, you don't get no cell phone service, so your cell phone's going, you got a little TV. You got a panic button, 
You know? And a lot of jail cells and prison cells that I was in, they have panic buttons. For real. You got a little button in there. You press a panic button. A lot of people say, man, there ain't no button for you to press in jail or prison. Go watch 60 Days In. They got panic buttons in their jail cells. For real. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's happening. Your clothes, most of the time they take your clothes when you're admitted into a hospital. You won't have your clothes. You got a little gown or whatever. You're kind of like in a paper suit and suicide watch in jail. If you're in a hospital for a really long time, they might walk you outside, get some fresh air, just like you're in jail or something, you know? They let you go outside for a couple hours in the rec yard, a little chained up freaking uh, box, dog cage, whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? Waiting for someone to come visit you in a hospital, just like jail. God, please give me a visitor. If you got anybody that's going through some stuff and they're in the hospital, man, go visit them on a regular basis. Just like jail. If you got a loved one that's locked up in jail or prison, man, go visit them on a regular basis. They need it. And also, I don't know about y'all's hospital, but they got vending machine food. Yeah, you know. I used to go hit up that vending machine. You get the same kind of snacks you get in jail. Vending machine food. You leave the hospital. This is another thing in the hospital that I was at. Uh, you know, you can come in and out the hospital, the emergency room. And when you go into the emergency room, there's a cop. Or you go into the little emergency section, there's a cop right there. Okay, sitting there on a regular basis. Every time I go into that freaking hospital, me and that cop, no, it doesn't matter what cop it is. Me and that cop, we lock eyes for a split second. Like, yeah, you're on one side, I'm on the other. You know, we're on, it's almost as though we're on two totally different teams when really I don't have, you know, no problems with the cop. But for real, sometimes cops look at me like that. They could tell that these are freaking prison tats and they judge me almost instantly. You know what I mean? So going in and out of the hospital over here, by my house, there's a cop always there, and I always have to worry about, uh, you know, being judged and all that stuff. But you can't leave, you can't go nowhere if you get, if you're in, if you're in a freaking hospital bed. But yeah, man, you know, the hospital is a lot like jail, for real. I remember I was sitting in that freaking room with the old lady. I was sleeping on a little, it was like a little uh, couch thing that was built into the wall. I was sleeping on that thing like I was in booking. You know what I mean? Booking after getting a DUI. Sleeping on that little bench, freezing. Hospital rooms, freezing. You know what I mean? I was thinking to myself, damn, I need a cigarette. You know, I just want to light up a cigarette right there. But you can't. got to go outside. Same thing, jail. You can't light up a cigarette. got to go make sure the police have disappeared or something. All kinds of things, you know. And then you're sitting there waiting for the doctor to come back, tell you good news or bad news. Kind of like a lawyer coming back while you're in the holding tank, waiting for them to bring you good news or bad news. You know, it's so many similarities of jail to the hospital, man, for real, it's crazy. But anyways, there is something else that I wanna talk about that's kind of off subject. It's about airports, okay? Uh, airports, LAX, LAX, man. They are allowing people to fly, will come into their airport and bring with their luggage anything uh, up to an ounce of weed. Can you believe that? An ounce of weed. This is probably one of the biggest trick up laws I've ever heard in my life, okay? If you wanna get on that plane, go to the airport with an ounce of weed, hey, by all means do it, but look, check it out. They say that you can get on the plane, you can pack it up on LAX, okay? Put the weed in your luggage, all that stuff. Of course, they might pull you to the side and weigh it out, make sure it's not anything more than an ounce, but at the same time, they'll let you get on the plane, they'll let you go, they'll let you get on the plane. Now, if the state that you land in don't allow it, that's up to you, that's up to the individual. What kind of freaking trick up law is that? You know what I mean? It's almost, it's a setup. It's a setup. Don't ever, look, do not take your freaking weed onto no airplane, okay? Unless you're flying literally to another state that allows it. You are going to be hemmed up so damn fast, man. What kind of trick up law is this? I'll tell you what, man, it's a scary day and age. Laws are getting ridiculous, man. They are getting ridiculous. There's so many laws out there that people have no earthly idea about. I know people that got locked up, they didn't even know that was, a man, I had this one, there was this one dude, I, I can't believe I haven't told this story, there was this one dude that got locked up in, from, in Virginia Beach jail, he was on probation, okay, and he wasn't drunk or nothing, he just went out to the ocean, well, this is what he told me, he went out to the ocean front, and he got into it with a police officer, he wasn't drunk or anything of that nature, he started cussing at the officer, and guess what, in Virginia Beach, you're not allowed to freaking cuss at an officer. You're not allowed to cuss at all. Usually they'll give you a fine, but I'm sure if the cop wants to be a jerk about it, he'll figure out a way to put you in cuffs. And that's exactly what happened. Homeboy got locked up and he's on probation. 
sitting in jail on a fresh charge of cussing. For real, can you believe that? I think he also got like disturbing the peace or something because he got into it with them and he started screaming. I don't know, but for real, for real, one of his charges, and he said it all started because I was cussing at the officer. Some places you will get charged for having wearing your pants too low, for cursing, for jaywalking, all kinds of crazy stuff, man. A lot of these people don't understand some of these laws, man. Cops could really uphold them and lock you up behind them. And some of these laws are straight up trick ups, for real. Like this LAX weed thing. A lot of people might think, damn, that's cool as hell. That's cool as hell. Man, they are very free about the weed out there. You know what I mean? Until you get land in Virginia and your butt gets oiled up for trafficking. You know what I mean? <laughs> My, hey, do not do it. Just keep that reefer at home, man. Don't get on no plane with no weed, man. You're just asking for problems. But anyways, I thought I'd just talk about that subject really quick. But yeah, there are a lot of things out here in the streets that remind me of prison. I know there's a lot of people that have been locked up for a long time that can sit there and say, you know, this, that, and the third reminds me of the penitentiary. And I understand your pain, my friends. I understand your pain. And there's a lot of people that say, man, you can't get post-traumatic stress from prison. Man, think again, man. Think again. Seeing some of the stuff I've seen and other inmates have seen, man, you won't never forget the rest of your life. I swear I have nightmares about prison. I just told a nightmare that I had the other night on my live stream. You know, stuff is real, man. It's real. I don't dream too much. Sometimes I'll have these uh, spurts of dreams, you know. I'll go like months without even having any dreams or at least the dreams I can't, I can't remember them, you know. And then I'll have months of dreams every night and I'll remember every last detail of it. And a lot of the nightmares I have are about penitentiary, jail, catching fresh charges, leaving my kids on the streets, you know, saying goodbye to them, going to prison. That I remember that one like it was yesterday, man. I, I had a murder charge on the streets and I had to say goodbye to my kids because I was never going to see them out here in the free world anymore. Now that's one hell of a nightmare, my friends. I woke up thanking the Lord above it was just a nightmare. And it was so real that in my dream, I, you know, it was real. People don't understand that though, man. They just look at criminals like, hey, go to prison, come out, and you can try to be as normal as possible. But people don't understand for real. They don't. If you ain't been locked up, you really don't understand, man. Same goes for military. You know, there's a lot of people in the military that see some crazy crap for real. And then they expect them to come back to the States and just... You know, just just picture that, okay? Just picture that. You're in the military. You're going to the war front. People getting killed left and right. And then you come back to America and people, all they care about is PlayStation and, you know, 6 9 <laughs> That's all they're thinking about, 6 9 They don't even know what the hell's going on overseas, man. I can't even imagine that, you know what I mean? Let alone going to the penitentiary, seeing people get shanked, raped, and all kinds of stuff, and then coming out in society and worrying about, uh, you know, what are you going to eat at McDonald's? People don't even understand, man. That's why I always say put yourself in another person's shoes. For real. Some people's mind states are really messed up behind the stuff that they have seen. Keep that in mind, y'all. But anyways, I salute to every last one of you who have been supporting me since the beginning and everyone who is just now hitting that like and freaking subscribe button. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. I just beat Tomb Raider last night. It's back to Call of Duty. Today I'll be playing some Modern Warfare. I might tap into some Black Ops 3 or something. Get ready for Black Ops 4. And also do not forget to check out the Teespring link. Man, you got, go get yourself some merchandise. Go go, 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 go get, get yourself some damn merchandise, my friend. Would y'all buy some... Hey, for real, just do this Do this for me. Because I'm. I, it's up in the air. I don't know if I want to make it or not. Alright. I know people want me to make free Grizz t-shirts. Okay, listen. I'm going to give you... Uh, number to choose from you can leave your comment but leave a number at the end of your comment leave a number one at the end of your comment if you would buy a t-shirt that says that jank is right <laughs> that jank is right right there boy uh, leave a number two at the end of your comment if you would like to see a t-shirt that says this that and a third leave a number three at the end of your comment if you want to see a t-shirt that says free grizz do that for me and i'm thinking about making all three of them but i just want to see which one's would be more popular. But anyways, I hope everybody has a safe and blessed day out there. Today was a Sunday, beautiful Sunday morning. Day of rest. Go get yourself some rest and relaxation, my friends.